First Robotics is built on the principle of inspiration, at all levels of the program. The first robotics competition ran for the first time in 1992, and in the years after, new levels of the program were added. First Tech Challenge, one of these offshoots, is now one of the largest segments of the program, supporting over 8,000 teams. But where did it all start? How did First Middle Program that started as an experimental bridge between LEGO robots and 120-pound FRC machines evolve into one of the most competitive, strategic, and technically challenging robotics competitions in the world? On this episode of Rewind, we're covering the history of First Tech Challenge, from early roots in FRC to game evolution and program alignment, coming up on Rewind. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all things FTC. Teams who are looking for inspiration in Decode can check out Animark's Robits Core Kit and FTC Starter Bot, which are designed with usability and accessibility in mind. And check out some of their new components suitable for any FTC robot. Head on over to Animark.com to find solutions that fit your team. Founded by FIRST alumni, FRC Tees understands what teams need. High quality apparel fast. From t-shirts to jackets and more, with a free 14-day turnaround and faster options available, you can join 200 plus teams who are already saving. Apply for a sponsorship and get your quote now at FRCTees.com. In 1998, FIRST partnered with the LEGO company to develop a junior robotics challenge that would inspire young students in STEM fields. They launched 200 FLL teams to start exploring the expansion of the program. This started the development of FIRST Pipeline, establishing the ability for a student to engage with FIRST programs from elementary school through high school. FLL covered elementary kids, but FIRST still needed a bridge between FLL and their flagship program, now called FRC. In 2002, FIRST, Innovation First Inc., IFI, and Radio Shack collaborated to create Robovation, a robotics kit designed to be accessible, modular, and available off the shelf at Radio Shack. It featured aluminum extrusion rails with pattern holes, high traction wheels, and a downsized version of the FRC control system. The kit was designed to mimic the FRC build experience, giving students a chance to experiment with mechanical design and electronics at a more manageable scale. These robots were simple, but powerful, offering many of the same components and control systems as their larger FRC counterparts. By late 2003, the pilot initiative evolved into a formal competition known as the First VEX Challenge, or FVC. Teams competed in a scaled-down version of the 2004 FRC game, Raising the Bar, using one-third scale robots. The reception was strong, and FIRST, along with IFI and Radio Shack, developed a specialized VEX robotics kit for broader use. This included motors, sensors, a control system based on the PIC microcontroller, and a range of mechanical components. The trial season of VEX Robotics Challenge went smoothly, and first partnered with IFI and Radio Shack to develop the kit for a more specific application. Games that were built for robots this side, and developed skills needed for FRC. This kit also featured a control system that was cheaper and easier to operate. The program had to scale to under-resourced teams, and couldn't do that at the current cost. The microcontroller was specifically developed for this application. It was cheap, durable, and the right size. By 2005, the kit was commercially available, and the first game of First Vex Challenge was released. This game was still a third-scale version of the larger FRC game, and teams placed tiny tetras on posts to score points. 136 teams registered for six reg regional tournaments. Kit components included preformed plates and angles, hardware and wrenches, motors, sensors, and all the electronics needed to run a robot. The kit was listed for about $300, or around $500 today. Of these teams, 50 participated in the first championship, and immediately after, the first board of directors elected to, co to continue the program for the 2006-2007 year. This was the first game designed specifically around the smaller robots, scaled to the capability of the mechanisms. The game, Hanging Around, featured triangular goals and a centered bar for hanging. It was more well received than previous games because of this scale, and the program quintupled in size. However, the collaboration between FIRST and VEX was not meant to last. In the summer of 2007, after the success of Hanging Around, VEX and FIRST split, and the two programs would release separate games for the 2007-2008 season. The build system and control system would be redesigned for this FTC season by Pitsco, using an NXT brick and new structural framework called Tetrix. Many teams still opted to use the VEX build system, which would remain legal. With this transition began the second era of FTC, 
the Tetrix era, lasting from 2007 to around 2014. During this period, games were both simple in design and strategy. Robots performed basic tasks like moving blocks, climbing ramps, or shooting lightweight projectiles. The limitations of the hardware, especially the NXT brick and Tetris motors, meant that many robots were limited in both form and function. Many were built to perform general purpose actions, with few mechanisms for specialized scoring. Teleoperated performance dominated gameplay, and autonomous routines were typically limited to short, straight line movements. Games from this era incorporated easily accessible game pieces with designed field challenges. Of the games in this era, 2008-2009, Hotshot, is fondly remembered for introducing the launcher archetype of game to FTC. Around 2015, FTC entered its next phase, the modern robotics era. During this time, the program transitioned to a more flexible and powerful control system using Android smartphones. These phones communicated wirelessly and allowed teams to write more sophisticated code using the Android SDK and Java. Modern robotics hardware provided more motor controllers, sensors, and integration, although it was still occasionally unreliable due to issues with electrostatic discharge. With the new capabilities came a rise in game complexities. Rescue in 2015 introduced mountains, debris, and climbing challenges, while Velocity Vortex in 2016 encouraged fast cycling and strategic positioning while also incorporating launching. Relic Recovery in 2017 incorporated 3D navigation and visual tracking. These games demanded more from robots, and teams responded by improving their design processes. CAD became more widespread, mechanisms grew more specialized, and teams developed their own linear slides, flywheel launchers, and more sophisticated intakes, as these mechanisms became available off the shelf as well. Software also matured with the introduction of PID control and sensor fusion to support precise movement. This era also saw the rise of Mechanum Drive. While these wheels had existed in F FTC for years, they were often dismissed due to control difficulties and power limitations. But with better motors and sensors, some high-level teams became using Mechanum to gain an edge. Strafing allowed easier alignment, improved agility, and more dynamic autonomous paths. The strategic meta had also shifted. Drive-based level robots went from being more useful defensively to having tasks to do offensively like pushing game pieces into a floor zone. A major downside to Mechanum was power output, but without viable defense strategies, a power output is less of an important trade-off. In 2018, FTC adopted the Rev Robotics Control Hub. This system integrated motor control sensors and wireless communication into one compact device. Combined with the expansion hub, it became the new standard. Rev offered a more robust hardware ecosystem as well, including extrusions, motors, servos, and sensors that gave teams a strong foundation for advanced builds. This era introduced some of FTC's most iconic games, Skystone in 2019, Ultimate Goal in 2020 being standout examples. Skystone encouraged modular stacking and coordination with alliance partners, while Ultimate Goal demanded speed, precision, and the time that teams took to do these things during COVID allowed teams to improve on launching rings into high goals and racing across the field for power shots. It was during Ultimate Goal that Mechanum Drive became the clear meta. Strafing was essential to align with shooting targets, and the open field rewarded mobility. In addition, without playing against alliance partners, there was no clear downside to the loss of power. Most high-level teams use Mechanum wheels along with odometry systems for precise localization. Open source tools like Roadrunner and Meep Meep help teams simulate paths and build advanced autonomous routines. Autonomous scoring became critical, with many teams achieving multiple game cycles before driver-controlled play even began. From 2022 onward, FTC entered its current modern phase. There is a wide range of teams playing within this program, from teams just celebrating movement to highly engineered custom machines. Many teams have access to 3D printers, CNC machines, laser cutters, and custom electronics. Robots are designed with tight integration between hardware and software. Teams analyze the game meta, adapt mid-season, and publish early Robot in 30 Hours designs to help others iterate. This community collaboration has led to great leaps in design, software, and strategies in higher levels of the program. The past four seasons, Power Play, Center Stage, Cascade Effect, and Into the Deep have featured fast-paced gameplay. Automation in the teleoperated period is also on the rise, as more robots become factory robots. Robots that sit in one place, grab game pieces out of their robot, bring it into their robot, and score it in another place without moving. The past few games have presented many technical challenges. Fitting them all in one robot as an integrated system has been the main focus of the design challenge. FTC games have become a champion of balancing engineering with build strategy. As open builds evolve, the community will keep building on the engineering challenge, and focus on the strategic challenge will increase. This year's game, Decode, 
has become an interesting balance between large game pieces and incentivizing small builds for endgame. We'll see how strategic choices influence design as the season progresses. Ultimately, FTC has grown far beyond its original scope. What began as a scaled-down version of FRC is now a world-class competition in its own right. From early VEX kits to modern custom machined robots, from basic code to fully autonomous multi-cycle routines, FTC has provided students with the tools and freedom to build something extraordinary. But until then, thank you for joining us on this episode of Rewind. If you enjoyed this, look into FTC's history and development, make sure to give us a like and subscribe. Let us know in your comments what your favorite FTC game was, and we'll see you next time on Rewind. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. FRCTs has been trusted by over 200 first teams to save on custom shirts and team apparel. Founded by first alumni and offering a free 14-day turnaround with faster options available, your team can apply for a sponsorship and get a quote when you scan the QR code or go to frcts.com. Animark is your one-stop shop for all things FTC. Teams who are looking for inspiration in Decode can check out Animark's Robits Core Kit and FTC Starter Bot, which are designed with usability and accessibility in mind. And check out some of their new components suitable for any FTC robot. Head on over to Animark.com to find solutions that fit your team.